Everybody please take a seat. We can't have people standing here. Please keep the video is free. There are three more places here. <coughs> they are full. Yeah, cool. One place here, two places there. Please don't use the tables at the Two places here. Please don't use the tables at the back. We are not allowed to. It's working. Mm -hmm. it's working. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you will pick a different seat. It's a good school. So, how many people like to do it? Three. Okay. Good. You have a signal? No. Oh, not yet. Sit down. There are four places somewhere. Here's. <coughs> Any more free places now? There. Okay. Do we have video or do we have audio? Yes? Okay. Thank you. Good. Someone, when someone tries to get in, be told that we are full, that I don't have to shout. Thank you. Then welcome again in the small talk dev room. This is Craig Latta and he's going to talk about Spoon and is Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Hello, my name is Craig Latta. I'm a board member of the Squeak Foundation. Um, Squeak is an open source uh, implementation of Smalltalk, a uh, dynamic object-oriented programming language. And uh, it's probably most popular nowadays as the uh, underpinnings of Scratch, a uh, visual uh, <coughs> programming language teaching environment for kids uh, out of MIT. Um, Squeak itself uh, came from uh, Alan Kay's research group, um, first at Xerox PARC, then later at, uh, it moved from there to uh, Apple and uh, Disney, Disney and uh, Hewlett Packard. Uh, 
uh, and now they have their own um, research uh, institute uh, called the Viewpoints. Um, I'm going to talk uh, about uh, sort of a mashup of two things uh, that I'm doing. Um, the first is a, um, a distribution of Squeak called Spoon, uh, which is meant to be uh, a minimal um, implementation of the system. Um, one thing about uh, dynamic systems that I've noticed in general um, uh, is that they tend to grow by accretion. Um, and that's certainly been the case uh, with Smalltalk. Um, it's sort of like um, a culture, uh, like beer or cheese. Uh, it, um, it, it grows by people adding things to it. And um, in the case of Smalltalk, the system is made of uh, live objects that communicate to each other by sending messages. Um, so um, yeah, just over time, um, the system has uh, has uh, grown as people contribute to it without, for most of its life, having had a good uh, way of doing modularity. Um, and so, you know, obviously that's a problem as your, your system grows like that. Um, the main problem is uh, teaching it to uh, newcomers. Um, it kind of becomes hard to get an overview of what you've already got. Um, and uh, specifically what you can reuse because that's usually the first question you want to ask uh, when you're starting a new project is you know how much of this has already been done so I don't have to you know duplicate effort so I'm trying to make a system that's uh, uh, very modular <coughs> so that it makes it easy to collaborate with other people and um, perhaps even more importantly with yourself because over time uh, also you are like multiple people you're sort of collaborating with uh, your past self and your future self all the time. Um, so I'm making um, um, a minimal uh, object memory uh, for Smalltalk. Um, I'm not going to explain a lot of the terms that I'm using. Um, if I say something that you don't understand, just interrupt me. Um, and I'll try to just give a, like, a one-line uh, explanation of things. Um, so I'm making a, a, a minimal object memory, which is sort of like the um, the RAM of a of the Smalltalk virtual machine, uh, like you know, sort of like when you close the, your laptop, um, it makes a, a snapshot file of the contents of its RAM. Uh, so Smalltalk has a, a similar concept. Um, I'm making a. Uh, a version of the object memory which only has what the system needs to start up and to uh, load modules and to um, advertise what modules that it has so that you can make a sort of a federation of a whole bunch of uh, small talk uh, memories um, that are all talking to each other and all providing modules to each other. Um, Got to plug this first of all uh, at thiscontext.com that's my blog um, that's where I um, give little progress reports about uh, the progress of the Spoon project. Um, and there are some little movies there uh, showing some of the visualizations I've made. This uh, image, this picture on the top of the site is a um, little bit of a visualization that I've made of uh, one of my minimal object memories. All, each of these little yellow um, points is an object in the system. And then um, in this visualization, or this set of visualizations I've got, um, there are two different um, connections, kinds of connections that are shown. Um, the blue lines are show instantiation. Um, so um, this object here is a weak array or an instance of some class called weak array. And uh, all of these little yellow um, points you know, coming off of it are instances of that class. So that's one kind of connection, these blue lines. And then the gray ones um, are showing, um, uh, oh, sorry, I've got this backwards. Um, these gray lines are showing instantiation relationships, and the, these blue lines are showing uh, subclass relationships. Uh, anyway, if you go to thiscontext.com, you can uh, see some um, 
some animations. And I guess I will show one of them now. Um, that's sort of a good thing to show to get some context. Um, if my net connection still works. <coughs> Maybe I'll show that second. I'm using kind of a weird networking setup right now to make the Raspberry Pi to be able to display uh, on my laptop. So maybe we'll look at that first. And I'll come back to my blog. Because the FOSDEM Wi-Fi is probably faster than my mm -hmm. weird T-Mobile setup right now. Um, <coughs> Oh, no, that's okay. I'll, I'll just uh, do the second. Yeah. I'll just switch network interfaces. Um, so, yeah, I've got up here, you can come up at the end of the talk to see it. Um, uh, Raspberry Pi here with a little Netgear Wi-Fi um, USB module plugged into it. Um, and it's just at the moment, just for convenience, it's being powered off a serial cable that's connected to my Mac. Um, but I'm actually talking to it by making my Mac and the Raspberry Pi join uh, a network that I set up on my iPhone. Um, and the one little demo I'll give, other than just showing it live, um, Oh, you have to bear with the graphics performance. It's kind of slow on the Pi. Um, one thing I always have is running at the full clock. If you never left, if you see the second or two, then you have a second or second. Um, so for the small talk of the audience, uh, you might notice we sort of have two UI frameworks. One of them, which is sort of fancier, the one that I'm running now, is called Morphic. Um, Sort of been transplanted from a, another version of Smalltalk called Spell. Um, and it's pretty fast. And then over at Clock and Spell, it's not that good. And it's going over X11. Um, As I say, on the Pi, it was just a matter of making sure that um, the OpenGL dev libraries were there and so on. Um, 
all the uh, libraries that the Squeak VM is going to call on to implement all the primitives that it does for OpenGL or file system access or um, all the rest of it. Um, so yeah, once I get that running, then you know I get all the all the apps that I've already done in Squeak, and you know they all sort of work at once. It's, it's like an all or nothing thing. Um, so just like um, you know, once you get say VMware or Parallels for some other for some new host platform, then you can you know reasonably expect your uh, Linux uh, VM um, you know to to work and behave you know pretty much like it does on any other host platform that you're running your um, hypervisor or emulator on. Um, so yeah, so this is um, Spoon running on the Pi and displaying over X11 on my laptop. And sort of the one Spoon-centric demo I'll do um, in this uh, short talk is showing a remote browser. So this is a this is a class browser uh, in Squeak, um, but instead of browsing the classes that are in this object memory, and now we're, we've switched back to my laptop. I should probably change this background image or something to make it clearer. If you see a menu bar, then we're in ports in X. Um, and this is the pie. Uh, if you don't, then this is the same Squeak object memory running on my laptop. So just before this talk, I copied my object memory snapshot from my laptop onto the Pi and, and started it up. Um, so anyway, this is a remote system browser um, and it's going to take a while. Every time the screen... Oh, you're not seeing this. Do you see the flashes? Yeah. Oh, you don't. Okay. Um, so... I've got a bug, but we see that there's some sort of remote messaging going on. Um, this is uh, called a notifier, the beginning of, uh, or one part of the debugger UI in Squeak. Um, this remote message browser uh, runs by sending messages to objects that are on uh, the Pi, running on the Pi. Um, and on the Pi side, um, there's some object that doesn't understand some, mes some message that I've sent. So that will be the end of my demo. But, um, normally, when you're looking at a um, at a classes browser. Um, you're able to you know, select a, a class category and then a class and then some method and, and see source code and change it and so forth. And the debugger, which I will demo instead, um, although it will take a while to paint, um, is uh, very similar to a class browser. In fact, they share a lot of code. Um, but instead of selecting methods to edit, um, by selecting a class and seeing all of its methods and then picking one of those, you're presented with a, uh, a list of uh, activation contexts um, that your methods are running in. You can choose one of those, and then you see the source code for the method of that, that frame, of that context. Um, and you can actually change the source code of a method, uh, recompile it, and then um, restart that context and, and keep going. So that's a great way of debugging without losing all the state that you've built up to get to that point. Um, the other way around, it's the only decent way to do test-driven development. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, like Stefan just said, it's the only decent way of doing test-driven development. Um, so, um, part of Spoon is a, a complete uh, room messaging uh, library so that you get full transparency. Um, any r remote object is going to look like it's local to an ob objects that are local that are, sen that are sending messages. Um, in fact, there's no way to tell um, 
that an object is remote um, without doing some pretty obscure magic. Um, and so in that way, you can make a distributed, a distributed system um, of federating many object memories on many different physical machines together to do some, to do some task. Um, so it's probably the end of the live stuff that I'll do. I'll go back to my blog and point out some highlights. If you have any more Pi specific questions, uh, please come up at the end and I'll be happy to talk more about that. Um, most of the, the debugging I had to do to make things work is, is not all that interesting, unless you're really into GDD. Um, so I've done a couple of uh, visual visualizations. Um, this uh, system that generated the my banner um, image at the top is uh, called uh, Walrus, which does these great uh, hyperbolic um, directed network graph uh, visualizations that let you look at um, millions of nodes um, at once, but it makes the uh, ones you're most interested in, interested in bigger. Um, and the ones that you're not, um, you know, that are more jumps away from you, a lot smaller. So you can actually look at millions of things at once without getting uh, lost or overwhelmed. Uh, so here's one video I've made. So what we're looking at here is a recent spoon object memory in the uh, Walrus 3D graph visualizer, which is very nice. Um, so it lets you, you know, move around in the space, rotate the space, and zoom in. These blue lines here are the spanning tree, which is a tree that passes through every node once and only once. So you can select a node and put it in the center, relay out. You can select a node and see what it is. That hex number there is the OOP, the object memory address. Um, so we can uh, put a very distant object in the center and uh, go over there. <coughs> See what's going on. <coughs> so, the that banner picture is just a still from this movie. So, got a week array right here with some symbols in it. This is a really useful way of uh, figuring out what's in here, getting a feel for the space. The particular objects I was just looking at in this movie are, are familiar to um, people who've worked with Smalltalk for a while, uh, but don't worry if that didn't make any sense to you. Um, they weren't familiar to you. Um, but this is uh, every object um, in the minimal spoon object memory. Um, and while this, while the walrus visualizer is good for looking at millions of things, there are only, I think, 10,000 objects um, in the spoon memory. And that's, for a small talk image, that's really small. Um, the um, mainstream small talk images, which are descended from the mid-70s Xerox Park images, uh, usually have you know, like about five million objects in them, you know, a lot, lot more. Um, and I'll end just with one more visualization, this time showing uh, the complete object memory in, in 2D, just linearly laying out every byte um, in the object memory and coloring them depending on what kind of object that byte belongs to. So that was an interesting one. Um, whereas the, the 3D one I just showed gives you an idea of how things are connected, this gives you, this 2D one gives you an idea of um, 
what the demographics of an object memory are. The, the blue here, these bytes all belong to contexts, which makes sense because um, the, the basic model of this multi virtual machine is of an idealized CPU. Um, and in its memory, um, the, the biggest single kind of object is taken up uh, if your class library is really small, is taken up with objects that describe the state of the processor, the processes it's running, and the um, activation contexts of those processes. Uh, so this is just a little animation that sh shows uh, how the object memory changes over time for a very short little slice of time. Um, I think this whole movie, which is 20 seconds long, uh, is just like the first six milliseconds of, uh, of a spoon memory after you start it up. This is the spoon object memory running the first 3,000 instructions after resuming. It's drawn at one pixel per byte. The red pixels show the beginning of each object. You can see objects being created in new space on the bottom. They're most like context. So as um, you see stuff being drawn at the bottom, those are new contexts um, being run as the processor is running. Um, yeah, so questions? Um, forgive me if it seems like a, a naive question, no but um, the context of, of what we're looking at in the sense of you have a, sort of a virtual machine running small talk, is it about debugging and visualizing the objects, or is it the thing unto itself? Like, it doesn't matter what type of software you're trying to write, or what type of program you're trying to run. Oh, yeah. I'm, the I'm purpose of, the, of, the, of this is to, to debug the virtual uh, machine, or...? So the whole project is about making a new distribution of Smalltalk that's uh, modular and small, yeah. so that it's uh, easier to teach it to people and for the, the people to collaborate after they've learned it. Um, and most of the tools that I am describing here, yeah, are about figuring out what else can I take away mm -hmm. um, while still keeping the essence of the system, um, and how can I more effectively make a distributed system. Um, through remote messaging. So it's to make it distributed between people using the same object yeah, and yeah. sending messages to each other. Yeah, like one big sub goal of this is to be able to collaborate without having to exchange source code with someone and making them read the pilot. Instead, you can just uh, give them the actual compiled method object that you've already made and have them run it. Um, theoretically, they'd be running those on Raspberry Pis, potentially? Yeah, yeah. So right now, Squeak, the Raspberry Pi is just the latest platform in, you know, about 15 now. Um, it runs on all the major mainstream OSs on, yeah, pretty much all the major hardware that's going now, and plus a few more obscure things like the Amiga and um, the DBC. Follow-up question? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, where do you find your central repository of nodes, then? Like you know, like you know, a la BitTorrent or a website, or how do you find other machines to oh, talk to? I'm sort of message. I'm sort of hijacking Google to do this. Mm -hmm. um, the module system um, has a, a a way of encoding um, the location of a machine and the identity of a module on a running object memory on that machine uh, as a URI. Um, and exposing them to Google, which indexes them. Yep. Uh, yeah. Cool. Oh, thanks very much. Thank you.
Next up is the small talk tutorial. Um, experienced small talkers, please make sure that you are not pairing with an experienced small talker, but perhaps with someone new to small talk. Uh, we are going to do this in pair programming style, so please do pair and And I have some sticks with the short code, code we want you to use. So, oh, it's fair. Okay. And you need uh, a for your uh, arm. 